Okay, so I am about to make a root, a root vegetable gratin. So these are some leeks that I just purchased. This is celery root. So I've had leeks before. I've never had the celery root before. And I have had turnips before, but maybe just once. And then I cheated and bought some diced onions. So first I'm going to prepare all these vegetables and I'll get back to you. Okay, so I just peeled the turnips and this is the celery root, which I peeled, which is not the same as celery. So now I'm going to slice these up and the, the recipe that I'm using, you'll see a link below. I'm not following the recipe exactly. It didn't have celery root in there, but it had potatoes and I'm using the celery root as a substitute for the potatoes. Uh, the turnips, I think, is a substitute for rutabaga, I think. Um, but then it did have leeks in there and onions in there. And I'm really upset because I went to Whole Foods, and the whole reason I went to Whole Foods was to get their organic rotisserie chicken, which is what I was going to have with this, but I forgot to get the chicken. Um, because another recipe that I'm making in a few days, I'm going to use part of that rotisserie chicken for. So I'm really upset. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do. Okay, so these are the turnips. So this is just one turnip. And then, well, because first I put the turnip in my food processor. It has a slicer, which I've never used before. And you see, it didn't really slice things the way I expected it to. So then I sliced up the other turnip myself. And then the other turnip didn't look very good inside, so I threw it away. You know, none of these vegetables are in season right now. So this is the celery root, which I went ahead and chopped up myself. And then I had a few small pieces left that I put through the food processor, and so here this is. Now the recipe calls for about three or four pounds of these vegetables, which obviously that's not what I have here, but that's okay because I'm just making this for me. So now I have to boil these in some salt water for a little while, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to prepare the leeks. Okay, so just in case you don't know what the leeks look like, this is what the leek looked like when I sliced it in half. You have to slice it in half like this so that you can clean it out really well because it gets dirt in these folds. And then I'm supposed to just slice it thinly and then these are gonna cook in the skillet with some onions. Now the leeks smell just like onions and the celery root smelled like celery, although it is not the root of a celery plant. That's not what it is, but it's related to celery. Okay, so these are the root vegetables. They've been cooked, they cooked uh, for about five minutes in some boiling water. And then this is my onions, my leeks, and some garlic. So I just sauteed these. I'm gonna put them on top of this, and then I'm gonna add my cheese and my cream. Okay, let me show you how I grate my cheese. I bought these years ago from Ikea, so I don't know if they're still there or not. So this recipe calls for Greer cheese. So what I like about these is that you grate the cheese easily over this container, but then the container has this lid so that you can store it in the refrigerator. So of course you take this off and then you grate the cheese. So I didn't use this one, I used these size holes for my Greer cheese. Aren't these little, aren't these nifty? Okay, so this is the final product before I put it in the oven. It actually wasn't all that hard, so I just uh, put the vegetables in, you pour the cream in and put the cheese on top, and then a little bit of nutmeg and some thyme. So, you know, I'm only using about a third of the vegetables, but I only, but I put in half of the cheese and half of the cream. So I'm kind of making this up. I don't know how it's gonna come out. We'll see. Okay, so this is the finished product. It looks so good. It smells so good because of the nutmeg. I can't taste it because it's eight o'clock at night right now and I'm fasting. So um, what I did though is I took it out of the oven when it was almost done and I stirred everything up. I wanted the ingredients you know, because I had only put the cheese on top and 
the nutmeg and the thyme and so I wanted all of those to get mixed in there so I mixed everything up I added a little salt I added a little pepper I put a little bit more cheese on top and then I put it back in the oven so this looks fantastic okay so the next thing I'm going to make is whole baked snapper now I have never had snapper before when I went to Whole Foods my intention was to buy whole trout because I love trout but when I got there, the snapper looked so beautiful and it's wild snapper and I do like to buy wild seafood. Uh, you know, trout is almost always farm raised. So I decided to go ahead and buy this snapper, even though it cost a fortune. I'm not, it's so expensive. So I really hope this turns out good. So one of them, it's just gonna be a simple recipe. I'm gonna put some lemon in there, garlic, some of this fresh thyme, and then I think I'm gonna put some of this Trader Joe's chili lime seasoning in there, I think. I'm gonna think about it as I'm seasoning this fish because I don't want to ruin it. I mean, this was more, it's cost so much money. So let's see how it comes out. Okay, so I forgot to say that, yeah, this, this was a huge whole snapper and I had them cut off the head, cut off the tail and scale it for me. So what I've done is, you can see here, um, I had to slice it open some more. So there's thyme in here, salt and pepper, butter and garlic. And I decided not to put the chili lime seasoning on because I want to taste the natural taste of this fish. And then I've squirted uh, lemon all over it. So this is going to be wrapped up in foil and it's gonna go in the oven. Okay, so the fish took about 40 minutes. I cut it down the middle because I just wanted to make sure that it was done inside. But look how beautiful that looks. I mean, I know if you don't like fish, it probably doesn't look all that good. But my house smells amazing. And I can't wait to try this tomorrow. So I was supposed to be having this snapper with an arugula salad. And then I was going to be having the chicken with the grot, the gratin <laughs> I always whatever so instead I'm gonna have this with the gratin and then for my second meal for lunch I'm just gonna have leftovers I always have leftovers in my freezer so I'm just gonna have leftovers and I'll wait and when I do my meal prep again in a couple days I'll have that arugula salad okay so this is the next day I'm eating my lunch and I just heated up a little bit of the fish well a lot of the fish and a big spoonful of this and I just tasted it this red this so this is red snapper it actually reminds me very much of trout so it's very delicious I, I do like it a lot and then this gratin you see how this it it tastes to me if I had my eyes closed I was think I would think I was eating cheesy potatoes and onions so yeah this is very good Okay, so it's a few days later. It's time for me to do my meal prep again. I don't feel like going all the way to Whole Foods to get an organic rotisserie chicken. So I'm going to cook my own chicken and I like to put it in a crock pot. So here's my chicken. If I have an onion, I will stuff it with an onion, but I don't have any onions. So I'm just going to uh, peel these, uh, peel the garlic and I'm gonna put some garlic in the chicken and really just season it with salt and pepper and then I'm going to put it in this crock pot for six hours. And um, I've done several videos on this. I like to do this because then I save all the juices and everything and I use, and the bones, and I use that to make my own bone stock later. Okay, so I am about to make this corn free bread for the first time. Um, I finally bought some silicone muffin cups. People talk about these all the time, so I just ordered this off of Amazon at the same time that I ordered this. So I'm gonna be trying these today. But I do wanna quickly talk about, so a few days ago I made their chocolate chip cookies, and you can see this whole plate was full and there was only two of them left. They are so good and they're really moist so it, they're for people who like soft cookies because these are soft 
but I don't think, there's no way you would know if these are made with artificial sweetener and just really good ingredients. You see, it's, it's so, I mean, it has a little, I keep mine in there for a little bit of time because I actually prefer crunchy cookies, but it's, it has a soft texture, but it's delicious. It's just absolutely delicious. So on to this. Now this recipe is a little bit different from, so this is gonna be the third recipe I've made. I made blondies, which were delicious. I've made the chocolate chip cookies twice. And then, so you see for this, all you really need are three eggs, melted butter, and apple cider vinegar. It makes 12. And you see it's six carbs, but five fiber. That's amazing. So only one net carb. I'm gonna be breaking my fast today with this. I cannot wait. Okay, so the cornbread is done. It smells amazing. So while it cools, I'm going to work on my broccoli. So I decided that since I'm going to, since the oven is already hot, um, I'm gonna go ahead and roast some broccoli in here. So I am going to chop this up and then put it in the oven and maybe by then the uh, muffins will be cool enough for me to try. Okay, this is quite a lot of broccoli. So I rubbed olive oil over it and I seasoned it with salt and pepper. This is what I have left and I'm going to use all of this along with the stalks in order to make broccoli rice. And I guess these are cool. I'm gonna take some out now and try it. Okay, so I just tried it and it is delicious, but um, you can tell it's not quite normal cornbread. So the texture is slightly spongy. The taste is very, very good. It's very light. It's a very, very light cornbread taste. But um, I mean, it is absolutely delicious and I can't wait to have these for breakfast and it's a good bread substitute. And for the fact that it's only one net carb, I mean, I'm gonna have these all the time as a substitute for cornbread. I'm not sure if you'll be able to fool someone who, like I haven't actually had any cornbread in about two years. So if someone eats cornbread all the time, I'm not sure how much they'll love this. But I mean, it's pretty, it's really tasty. Okay, so I just put all the broccoli heads in my food processor and I'm just gonna grind this up till it looks like rice. Okay, so I really only pulsed it a few times because I don't want it to be too thin, too, what's the word? Too mashed up. So there's even some bigger pieces in here, but I don't mind because it should be rice-like. Now I'm going to peel those stalks and put those in here. Okay, so I roasted the broccoli for a while and then I put some shaved parmesan cheese on top and i put that back in there for a few minutes so this looks and smells so good i just happen to have some parmesan cheese in my refrigerator because i'm going to be having caesar salads this week so yeah i've never thought of putting it on my roasted broccoli before and i'm still working on um the stalks of celery so i can put them in my food processor you have to cut the outer you have to trim down the stalk to the tender parts before you can um, put it in the food processor okay this actually was a lot of hard work man uh look at that but now i'm glad that this is not going to go to waste i'm going to put it in my food processor okay look how beautiful that is that looks even more like cauliflower rice because the stalks are more solid than the, um, the heads. So look at that. So I put the other ones in the bag because I'm not making this today, but this made a lot. My chicken is still cooking away there, but uh, I'll show you what I make with this in a few days. 
Okay, I still have a whole lot of hours to go before my chicken is done. So I went ahead and I divided up the broccoli into my four containers because I'm gonna have chicken for the next four days. And then this is what I have left, which I'm gonna give to a friend. She's coming over tonight and so she's gonna get some vegetables. <laughs> she's also gonna get some of the, one of the servings of my snapper. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about the snapper. So I've been eating the snapper for three days. And yes, it really was delicious. And it still kind of reminds me of trout. Although the more I eat it, the more I can tell it's not trout, but the texture is just like trout. And the gratin, gratin, whatever it's called, paired wonderfully with the fish. It was so good. I'm so glad that I had that with my fish, but I have so much left. So there's still more fish left. I'm gonna give her some fish. I find that usually I can only eat fish for about three days in a row. So she's gonna get leftover fish. She's gonna get leftover uh, gratin and she's gonna get some of this broccoli. Okay, so it has been six hours and this chicken is done. Look at that. It looks beautiful. And see, I like to save, so I save all of that juice and I freeze it. And when I break this chicken down, I'm gonna save the bones and I freeze that. And then after I get about three or four of these, then I use everything to make my bone stock. And like I said, I have several videos in the past where I show that whole process. Okay, so I just put together two of these. I still have to do two more, but I wanted you to see. So, you know, this is a drumstick and then the wing, because there's only a little bit of wheat meat on the wing. And then this is the thigh. And so I'm gonna chop up this chicken breast to put it in the freezer. And when I do that, I use the chicken breast for all types of things. I use it for stir fries, I use it for soups, I use it for salads, I use it for um, casseroles, just all types of things. So yeah, let me put the rest of my stuff together now. Okay, so each breast is in a bag, and usually I label the bag with a date and how many ounces it is before I put it in the freezer. However, my fingers were slippery and I picked up my scale and I dropped it on the floor. I'm so mad and it's broken. I've had this scale, I don't know, at least two and a half, three years, maybe four years. I use it almost every single day. Oh, and I can't tell you how much it annoys me to not know how much chicken is in this bag because that's how I know if I need to use one or two bags for my uh, casseroles. I don't know why I keep wanting to say cholesterol. Okay, so these are the bones from the chicken and then that juice that was in the crock pot. So that's gonna go in the freezer. The next time I make one of these, I'll just open up this container and pour everything on top along with the bones. And see, this is already August. And so, yeah, you know, soon it's gonna be time for me to make a big pot of bone broth for the fall and the winter. 